Hello, how's it going guys? Thank you for watching. For this video, I want to talk a little bit about the things that I believe uh, keep you from maintaining a keto diet. I've been doing keto for about two years now. There's a couple of times where I fell off and if you follow me on Instagram, you'll actually see that I posted a photo of all the times where I, where I was doing keto and my weight was going down and then uh, I slowly started cheating and then eventually just kind of came off of keto that I start going back up. I already believed that keto was the best uh, diet for me, the best way to control my weight and my cravings and hunger. But for whatever reason, I kept falling off. And that really got me thinking, I don't really feel like I have a discipline problem, but it's kind of hard to argue that point when my weight just keeps going up and down and I can't really stay strict on my diet. So I can say that I'm disciplined as much as I want, but nobody's gonna believe me unless they see some type of results. And not that I care so much about what other people think, but it does affect me in a way. Like in the case of the military, it does make me feel self-conscious knowing that, you know, I have certain standards to meet and I, I'm not meeting them. So anyways, for the last year, I've been really, really brainstorming and trying to figure out what those reasons are that I can't stay strict, especially because I love the keto diet. And so I came up with five reasons that I think are causing the problem. And what I found was interesting. It seems like out of the five reasons that I'm about to tell you guys, sometimes one is the obvious reason why I cheated. Other times that one's not even in the picture and another one becomes like the strong contender. Let me just get into the five reasons why I think um, I keep coming off of the keto diet. And I'll tell you right up front that these aren't in any particular order simply because the order is going to change depending on the person, depending on the situation and all that. So let me just get into it. So the first reason I believe I can't stick to the keto diet is habits. I'm so used to going to the theater and buying popcorn and buying snacks that when I go and I don't do that or I don't sneak in my own you know, pork rinds or nuts or anything like that, then it's really difficult for me to enjoy the movie without having that experience. So in that particular case, it has to do with just muscle memory and having to do the same thing over and over again. That could also be applied for like watching TV at home, you're relaxing. I used to eat chips and soda all the time while I watch TV. And then I realized that now I can't really enjoy TV. It feels like I have to be snacking on something. So I think habit for a lot of us is one of those uh, reasons that if we're really focused and committed, we, we can easily beat. But other times where we're just kind of getting started, it's still a really strong habit that you have. It's a little bit difficult. So you might break in the first couple of weeks because you can build habits and you can break habits. Eventually, if you keep winning that fight, uh, then it, at some point it doesn't become an issue. So the number two reasons that I think I can't stay in the keto diet is emotional eating. This was hard for me to admit to because for the most part, I don't like admitting when I'm depressed or down because my life before when I was growing up, financially it wasn't the best, but recently I was able to admit to myself that I do get down at points when things aren't working out, maybe me and my wife are arguing, then I tend to kind of spiral. And I realize that when I'm in that spiral, when I'm at that, at that in low point, that I do tend to use food as a way to combat that. I never did drugs, I don't really like pills, so a lot of the times when I get sick, I just rather, you know, just kind of walk it off. So it was a little hard for me to admit it, but I think for me, food is that medicine. And so moving forward, I see that as being a tool for me. So whenever that battle shows up, that's how I plan to beat it, is stop, pull myself away from that situation uh, mentally, and then evaluate if, if I'm eating because I'm trying to, you know, be happier or feel better. And I think a lot of people struggle with this one, especially because I think it really intermingles with some of the other reasons that I'm gonna talk about. All right, so I'm gonna keep it going. The third reason that I think I can't stay on keto is boredom. And there's a couple of types of boredom. Whenever I have some free time or I don't have anything to do, like my go-to is eating something. You don't really have anything to do, and so you wanna fill that time up with something. A lot of times you want to watch TV and then it triggers that habit. And the other side of boredom is a variety of food that you have. So a lot of the times when you focus on the stuff that you can't eat, then you're not really thinking about all the food that you can, so you feel limited and then that creates a type of boredom of the same food. So like, for example, I love pork rinds. Now that the keto diet is gaining a lot of popularity, there's more flavors, more types. So it's a lot easier now, but in the beginning it was like the same pork rinds and I was like, okay. And so I started getting bored of that. Those are the two sides. One, you have too much time and you try to fill up that time. 
and two, you eat the same food over and over, and so you get bored of that, and then boom, somehow you break. So now the way I plan to beat that is anytime I feel myself wanting to eat because I don't have anything to do or because I'm tired of the same food, then I just switch it up. There's a lot of keto-friendly food, very diverse food, but just some is a lot easier than others to get to, and, and so maybe just putting a little bit more effort. So one, you beat the time part by spending more time on actually uh, making your own meal. And two, it's a different meal, hopefully, than what you're used to because it requires more time to do. All right, so the fourth reason that I think I can stick to the keto diet is social pressure. And a good example of that would be like when you go to a party or a social event and everybody's eating cake or everybody's eating snacks. And so you just kind of feel that pressure and you convince yourself that, oh, you know, it's only tonight, it's Friday or it's Saturday, oh, it's my cheat day. And so you fall to that pressure and then you break your diet. For me, social pressure is not a huge thing uh, just because my entire life I haven't, like I don't smoke, I don't drink. I've had people pressure me to drink and, and thankfully I'm big enough that, you know, once it gets to a point, I can just be like, hey, I said no. And that kind of breaks that conversation right there. Maybe that's why I don't have that many friends. But it does show up here and there, and sometimes it does make it a little harder to kind of stick to it. When it does show up, there's ways that I can fight it. So for example, if I go to a party, maybe I can bring my own food, or I can eat before I go to the party so that I'm already full and I don't get tempted as much. But I can't imagine how social pressure can be a really strong force to some people, especially if you enjoy drinking. The fifth and last reason why I think I can't stick to the keto diet is restrictions. So as I mentioned earlier with being bored, restrictions kind of connected to that where if you feel restricted, like if you feel like you can't eat the things that you want to eat, then that frustration might carry over to justifying breaking the diet. I feel that sometimes where uh, because I'm happy with my size and really the only reason that I keep uh, dieting is because I am in the military and the military doesn't want somebody who's 5'10", 250 pounds. They want somebody who's, you know, 6 feet, 180 pounds and I just, I just don't fit that standard. So whether I like it or not, I still have to meet the standards. And to do that, I just have to diet and I have to be conscious of what I'm eating and how much exercise I'm doing. I'm not really self-conscious about my body. As I mentioned, the only time that I really feel it is when I show up to the military and then I have to, you know, get taped and, you know, get my body fat and all that. So when I feel like I can't eat a certain food that I enjoy because I'm mandated to, to keep my body looking a certain way, then that's really when that restriction kind of kicks in and it's easy for me to justify uh, you know what, I like the way my body looks, so I'm just gonna eat whatever I want and then I break. And really the only thing that I came up with to be able to beat that reason is just to realize that hey, there's certain things that I have to do to be able to continue to advance or continue to make my life better. And it's not the easiest thing, especially when your mind is telling you two things at the same time. Thankfully, now that I'm aware of it, uh, hopefully I can recognize it when it's happening and be able to kind of pull myself back and just kind of manage it. Now, I do have an honorable mention and I only include one because there's a lot, a lot of people have a lot of reasons why they can't stick to something. And to me, the, those seem to be like the top five, but I do think convenience plays a big role. There's nothing more convenient than being able to go to any store or any restaurant and eating whatever you want, however much of it you want, which you can't really do when you're in a specific diet, especially the keto diet because carbs are just so massive and they take up such a large percent of supermarkets and restaurant menus and all that. To me, it's not at the highest level of concern because once you've been in the keto diet for a while, once you realize which foods are okay and which aren't and which ones are like on the fence, it's a lot easier for you to go to restaurants and recognize what's keto friendly or go to the supermarket and stay out of the middle lanes and just be able to stay on the perimeter and recognize what's keto friendly there. For me, convenience in the beginning is really tough, kind of like habits. But then once you kind of go along, you get better, you practice, you practice, then it gets a lot easier. Now, I think that applies for a lot of these. So for example, emotional eating, if you're able to recognize that you're upset or you're down and that you're using that as an excuse to eat something so that you can feel better, uh, in the beginning, it's going to be tough, and I'm sure with practice, you'll be able to get better and better. But there's going to be some, certain times where it's just too intense, so it's easier just to kind of break, accept it, and then move on. But for the most part, I think all these reasons you can get better at, and just practicing and practicing and winning one fight at a time. And if you lose a fight, 
then being able to recognize it, going back to it so you can win the next one. I think that's just the best way to get better and more consistent with the keto diet in, in this case, but with life in general. All right, so those are my five reasons. I gave you guys an honorable mention. And just the last thoughts, when I first came up with the idea for this video, as I was brainstorming on why I'm, I was breaking from the keto diet, I kind of thought, oh, okay, you know, this could really be applied to uh, every diet. And then I realized, no, it can't. As soon as it came out of my mouth, I realized that there are certain diets where all these reasons wouldn't apply. And the number one thing would be something else aside from these reasons. So an example would be uh, a balanced diet, right? So a lot of the nutritionists tell you about a balanced diet. Normally they're talking about the government uh, recommendation of the food pyramid where you're supposed to have uh, you know, somewhere between 40 and 60% carbs and very little fat. So I think these reasons wouldn't apply to that diet because I tried that diet. When you're in that diet, cravings never go away because you're eating so, much, so many carbs. If you're insulin sensitive and you don't really have an issue with carbs and you can eat as many carbs as you want, you're still gonna be skinny or fit, then cravings don't really matter because you can eat, your body takes care of the carbs and everything and you're still good. But when you're insulin resistant and you gain weight easily with carbs, so you, where you're eating three meals a day and snacks in the middle, even if it's a balanced diet, you eat that meal, you eat that snack, and you're still gonna get uh, cravings or hungry uh, two, three hours later, and you eat a, a dinner and cravings before you go to sleep, and you wake up and you're hungry, and so those cravings never really go away. And so for me, I think if you're in a balanced diet and you're insulin resistant, uh, then cravings, I think, are gonna become your number one uh, enemy. Unlike when you're in the keto diet, and once your body's fat adapted, those cravings are pretty much gone. Even if they don't go away, they don't become the number one issue, in my opinion. And the second and last example that I have for that is the low calorie diet. And I'm mentioning this because I've done it before where I eat five, six meals a day, very small meals. And immediately after you finish eating, you're hungry again. So with that scenario, hunger is just like a massive elephant in the room. And as hard as you try and you try to ignore it, it's just constant throughout the entire day. You know, when you have cravings on the standard American diet and you eat, those cravings go away, even though you, you're gonna gain weight, but they go away. When you're in a calorie deficit diet, in my experience, the hunger never goes away. Now, I've seen some YouTube videos of nutritionists who promote the uh, calorie deficit diets, and they basically tell you that you have to be able to live with hunger to a certain extent, and I just can't accept that. If hunger means that your body wants something, I just, you can't convince me that feeling it is supposed to be normal. And because I've done it and because I've been there, hunger is such a strong feeling that trying to beat it is almost like a no-win situation. On top of these reasons that I mentioned in the beginning, now hunger is just like this massive player in that. Now, I don't recommend a calorie deficit diet, but if you're having difficulties telling the difference from hunger and cravings, which are completely different. It's really hard to tell unless you intentionally try to figure out what the differences are. But if you go on even on a three day fast, preferably four or five days, because the first two or three days are pretty rough, sometimes even four. But if you can make it to like the four or fifth day, then it's really, really obvious when you're feeling cravings, where you just craving a certain food, and when you're hungry, where you just wanna eat anything. I know it's a lot of information, but hopefully you'll be able to remember the next time that you're trying to stick to the keto and a situation comes up and you hopefully you can recognize it and be able to beat it. I am interested to know in your particular situation, which one of these reasons is the strongest. For me, as I mentioned, social pressure is not as big, but I think for my wife, it's a lot harder to beat social pressure just because she enjoys drinking, she's sociable, she has way more friends than I do. So for her, that one is probably her number one, to where for me, for the most part, habits and boredom are like on the top. There's times where emotional eating is like the number one reason. So if you have a little bit of time, please mention on the comment section below which ones of these you have the most problems with and maybe even the ones that you didn't recognize until I mentioned them or you weren't really aware of them. So I really appreciate you guys watching. 
please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to click on that bell so you get notified when I upload new videos. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.